Hello, everyone. My name is Sandeep Farais, and I'm the founder and managing partner of Elevar Equity. Uh, we're an early stage investor in India and in Latin America, focused on the education space in addition to financial inclusion, agriculture, and the micro and small enterprise space. Uh, today, it's my absolute privilege uh, to moderate a panel where we're going to talk about India's demographic dividend uh, and talk to three outstanding entrepreneurs focusing on the full range of issues in the context of education and employability in the Indian context. People who are building products and services uh, to meet the needs of the middle and low income populations in India. Um, and of course, given the size of, the India's, of India's population, the size of the problem also is correspondingly large. Uh, and so just a very, very robust discussion with three people who are at the forefront of trying to solve for these problems. Um, I, as a moderator, usually have a rule that I don't like to come between the speakers on the panel and the audience. So I am going to actually ask each person to introduce themselves uh, and to make it a little interesting, two sentences on themselves and their company, uh, and then one fun fact about themselves. Uh, so Imbasat, I'm going to start with you, if you can get going, and then Nirmita, I'll come to you, and Smita, I'll come to you last uh, as the only lady on the panel. I'm just going to reverse some of the usual rules. Thanks, Sandeep. Hello, everyone. This is Imbasat Ahmed. I'm a CEO and co-founder of Pillow. Uh, Pillow is a Greek word which means friend. But what we exactly do is that if there is a student in India and even abroad and that student finds any problem, can come to us and we will give that student a teacher in less than a minute, in just less than 60 seconds. That's what we do. If you are in problem, just ask Pillow. And the fun fact, as Sandeep asked, is like, uh, I, I am afraid of uh, uh, sharks. It's just that uh, sometimes I feel that if I get into sea, oh my God, sharks can hit me. It's just that some movies I've seen in, in my uh, teenage time or, or when I was under 10, I, I still sharks haunt me. Awesome. So the great white causes problems for you. Excellent. Uh, Nirmit, do you want to go? Hi, I'm Nirmit. Uh, so I'm currently building Apna, which is India's largest professional networking and jobs platform, catering to India's rising working class. A fun fact about me and Apna is uh, the name Apna is inspired by the Bollywood anthem Apna Time Aiga that chronicles the rise of this aspiring hip hop artist Murad, who makes it big despite all odds. Uh, thank you. Awesome. With our last word to you on introductions, do you want to go? Yeah, hi, I'm Smita Devra. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Lead School. Uh, we transform K-12 schools, uh, predominantly affordable private schools with an integrated system that significantly improves uh, student outcomes uh, here in India. And uh, one fun fact about me, um, I'm extremely fond of traveling. So I've traveled all the seven continents, including Antarctica. Uh, and I think it's, it's just the North Pole left now. I'm, I'm waiting to do that. Excellent. Post-COVID travel. Um, thanks. Thanks for those introductions. Uh, the way I wanted to run today's conversation was to cover three topics. Uh, first was the context and the building of distribution strategies within the Indian context, uh, with some particular reflections on the use of technology and the building of product in that context. Uh, so we'll start with that. Then the second part that I do want to spend some time on is the solutions for outcomes and how do we know that we're achieving outcomes. So impact, creating a difference in people's lives. And then the third, I do want to spend a little bit of time on the scalability uh, that each of your business enterprises aspire to that you're trying to solve for. Uh, and then hopefully we'll, we may have time for one more area, but Let's see whether we do. Uh, Nirmit, let's start with you. Uh, maybe your perspectives on the question of technology and distribution in the context of your business, uh, and how do you see that playing a role um, as you're building product to solve uh, for India's missing middle? Right, I, I, I think this is a very, very interesting question, right? In terms of models, right, like just a very base rule which I use is generally there are uh, there are two variables which I play uh, play around. One is the problem statement, and one is inclusivity. So uh, what what we have realized is that certain problem statements uh, can be solved by bits alone. 
certain problem statements need interaction of bits and atoms together. Uh, for example, we solve for networking, which can be solved by bits alone. So earlier the networking was happening, uh, the professional networking was happening around a chai kitli, which is like a tea stall. Now it happens over WhatsApp or over Apna and over Facebook. While were, uh, as, as well as there are certain problems like sk skilling, logistics, which definitely need interaction with atoms. Uh, we can upskill people digitally um, uh, and, and teach them English, but when we want to go and teach them welding, carpentry, and solve for those skill gaps, we end up needing a hybrid model. Uh, so, so that's the first variable which we look into. The second variable is inclusivity. And, and yes, we see a deep penetration in terms of internet and smartphone inside the country, but still two fifths of the country is away from it. And so that definitely needs an hybrid problem uh, to uh, like an hybrid model to solve. Um, and when we talk about employment today, uh, we are solving this problem of employment by helping people connect to the right jobs, helping people build uh, their digital identity. Many of them are first time internet users. And, 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 and we do this, we try to, again, the idea is to go completely digital first and to solve from digital. But as we start touching certain pieces, we, we definitely get to know that interacting with atoms is something important as we solve for inclusivity. Excellent. Thanks, Nirbit. Uh, Smita, let me bring you in at this point. Uh, I know in our conversations, you mentioned that uh, India needs a hybrid solution. This is not about uh, just a digital model or just an offline model. And Nirbit's also made reference to that. Uh, though he'll start with the digital dimension and that's where he's focused. Maybe if you can share your learnings and your observations in the context of lead school and what you've built out there. Uh, and then I'll come to Imbasat because I think Imbasat, from your standpoint, you, you're in some of the remotest parts of the country. So I'd love for you to reflect on that. But Smita, first to you. Yeah. Thanks, Sandeep. Uh, actually, uh, we have always looked at the solution in a hybrid format, and we've done that for two reasons. One is, uh, you know, there isn't very high internet connectivity, or even, in fact, in the places that we work, sometimes even power is not as reliable, right? Uh, but I think there is another very important reason, and that is, you know, we, we work with children from the age of three years all the way up to, uh, you know, 16, 17. As an educator, we know that only digital is not uh, enough and is not right for that age group. Being in a social environment is very, very important. And hence, we've always looked at improving student outcomes through transforming schools. Now, schools are these places, physical places in the community where children are coming. And if we are able to transform them with technology, which does not need internet connection all the time, you know, then we are able to make a lot of difference. So we did that with very simple things like, how do you make convert a classroom from a rote learning textbook based classroom to what we call a multimodal classroom, which is, uh, you know, there is uh, digital content in the classroom, and there are activities. And, and the way we did that was, uh, you know, low bandwidth data transfer, uh, preloaded tablets with content, uh, that works in within the classroom without an internet, but works just uh, using a local Wi-Fi uh, between a you know tablet device and a TV. So that's how we've we've solved for this. Uh, online learning has been an interesting experience. Uh, everyone has had to embrace digital a lot more, uh, and uh, you know in in that case, uh, mobile data has been the key uh, key vehicle really for us. And how do you then ensure that? Uh, high quality classes, which consume less bandwidth are able to get to students. Uh, so I think that those are those are the things that you know, you've got to innovatively, like at least we've, we've had to solve for that a lot. Uh, you know, what is the device penetration, what sort of device and what sort of data packages these parents will have. And hence, in those small packages, how can you ensure that the students are still getting their online school? Uh, so yeah, those are some ways we've solved for this. Uh, and it's been an interesting learning because, you know, it requires a lot of creativity to ensure that uh, all the classes reach them on time uh, without uh, a, a huge expenditure, uh, uh, you know, from the parent side. Excellent. Thanks, Smita. Himasad, do you want to come in? Because you worked in Jharkhand to Kashmir and just very difficult areas. So maybe some particular thoughts and perspectives. Uh, I know you also referred to the power issue when we spoke that Smita just referred to also. Uh, but maybe some reflections and some of the innovations that you've had to drive from a distribution using technology standpoint. So, yeah, like I've been trying different uh, technology tools uh, for almost five years. 
so when i built my first startup in kashmir which which goes by the name of rise then just to support uh, my team my teachers and my students of course and even the parents i tried with my hands on different technology output but the problem was with the continuity thing uh, you see uh, if if you are running a classroom and then one day because of any reason on earth uh, internet connectivity is not there and if it happens let's say twice in a row then that particular chapter that particular topic is simply you can assume that it's as good as it has not been taught at all because if any topic requires let's say five lectures or 10 lectures and out of them two have been just gone so students sim are simply left with lot of stress so here uh, continuity is a thing again like power issue uh, is one of the reasons but here in different parts of the country there are other reasons so like i, I remember in 2019 what i was doing i was basically recording video lectures 12 to 18 hours a day and uh, some of my students used to come to institute and collect them in a pen drive because there was no internet at all in kashmir and there was no way uh, i could transfer those uh, big data points to those students so ultimately uh, in in education primarily uh, uh, whatever solution we uh, create in in using technology we have to make sure that it is totally uh, consolidated from end to end because if any part is missing then ultimately a student is going to suffer because they feel that okay finally i have something new it will change my life it will give me something uh, a concrete uh, package but it, it it's is missing there so so that has been that has been uh, like one of the experiences in in solving these issues now thank you for that and i think this this idea of distribution and usage of technology in the other challenges will come up in the different you know topics that we cover through this panel discussion but maybe let's just shift focus and what i would request now in terms of answering the questions is contextualize it in in the happenings of your business so to speak and real challenges that you're facing and get to as specific examples as possible i want to move to the whole question of outcomes so first of all what does success mean for you all uh, in your respective organizations as the crux of the question from an outcome standpoint and the second question is where are you on the journey how do you know you're achieving those outcomes how you actually adding meaning or learning outcomes or any other way by which you measure success how do you know you're on that journey and what's happening in that context uh imisat maybe let's start with you uh, on this question uh go so yeah so out for for uh, in philo the outcome is simple that uh, the idea is that if a student is there and feels any issue now this time the difference is that we are not telling a student that you have to do this you have to study this or you have to take this test or you have to do this exercise it's not like that there are already enough material available uh, from the school side uh, from internet freely available but the problem is that we are trying to think from a student's perspective that even after having this much of tons of data and information to me am i ready to process it at my own speed so we are going from the thought of personalization and using technology to make the experience as personalized as possible and making it real time making it quick so real time and personalization are two most important uh, outcomes we are trying to achieve so here what happening that even if a student somewhere in bihar or somewhere in jharkhand or in kashmir or madhya pradesh is studying at midnight and feels anxious about anything can simply come to our platform and ask and we on the other end get that student connected to the most relevant guy so that is the power of technology which gives us happiness that someone who is who is uh, simply thousands kilometer away in less than in just let's say a few seconds is able to connect and can simply speak out all the issues that the student has been carrying so now no one no one has to wait for a couple of days or for weeks to meet someone to meet teacher nothing like that it's just it's so powerful so our outcome is that how many students could we connect every day how many in, in india is like india is land full of great minds hundreds and thousands of great minds they are just not uh, you know connected uh, at right place at right time to right set of people so we really feel happy that when lots of people who are very well qualified they come on our platform on their own and they say that, okay i really feel happy when i get to speak with 10 different students and get to resolve their issue so students simply when they connect they say that 
oh my god i i am i'm so happy i got to talk to you i was feeling under burden under pressure for almost a week so these stories uh, are are the outcomes which are coming to us and we are uh, our north star is that anyone who is stirring doesn't matter whichever curriculum board or whatever it is mm-hmm. if anyone is stirring should be at peace of mind and whenever that person feels that student feel that okay i'm i i, I need someone then there should not be much of a gap if you need someone okay we can find someone for you so if we that is our our, our north star of success at philo excellent thanks for that uh nindu do you want to come in in the context of jobs and employability etc and your own business uh, how do you see this issue of outcome right i think so the next half billion is you know it's very critical to india's growth story and yeah. and and helping them flourish requires to take a very holistic view of what constitutes a meaningful life for the next half billion and a key pillar i think so is equal opportunity generation and that is where apna comes in so let me just give you an example uh think of a rahul who is born in say new delhi comes from a very very privileged background uh goes to a good school gets the right skills makes the right friends gets the right network post the right network gets the right opportunities this opportunities allows him to get more right network and it creates a virtuous cycle of success for rahul just 15 miles away from rahul let's say a sonu is born she is born in not so privileged background now she is struggling her her, her entire family is struggling for money and basic needs she doesn't go to school she leaves school at say 9th standard never gets the network never gets the right opportunities is always in the survival mode and this leads to this crazy vicious cycle which she falls into now in today's india what you see both rahul and sonu have a smartphone they have internet and what as apna we want to do is we want to create a right level playing field so both rahul and sonu can get the right opportunities and 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 that's what the goal of apna is. so at, so our goal is to help people connect to opportunities and as i said we do this by helping them build digital professional identities uh, giving them access to the best local jobs helping them network with peers of similar skill professions and finally solving the skill skill gap by helping them find the right skills so they can get the next opportunity and keep growing in their career and and for us what it means in terms of outcomes right i think so making sure that they get the right job they are growing in their career most of the times for the india's blue and gray collar segment we have seen that they get stuck into a job or into a profession and they never keep growing unlike a white collar worker who keeps on growing in their uh, career trajectory so how do you inject the right amount of upskilling at the right point of time so people can keep on growing is something that is very very important to us uh, last month alone we have facilitated north of 20 million plus job interviews and work related conversations for this blue and gray collar workers and 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 and, and as as we talk about this uh this uh this uh workers they they are not like a matrix you know in in terms of our uh, of our mis or a investor pitch deck you know these are the smiles and um, and dreams which are going to power the growth story of the country no thank you uh it's what i find amazing about this panel is that you'll have effectively covered the entire continuum uh, smita in terms of school education uh, imbasat in terms of you know professional education if you will and the clearing of doubts and all of that including across the range and then nirmit of course you're dealing with the employability question and ensuring that people do have the right skills etc uh, which is ultimately if the democratic dividend has to be met uh we need that entire continuum to be in place uh but smita maybe good time for you to come in um uh, and the issue of outcomes uh and how you all think about it given that you'll work across different ages you mentioned uh three did you say all the way to 16 17 uh so how do you think about outcomes in that context i think one simple way i would say it is uh we should never have any sonus and i think that's that's really the mission that we are after uh but you know if i'm if i'm being a little more numeric oriented uh, uh the 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 way we measure student success or student outcome is basically mastery uh in all skill areas whether that is literacy numeracy scientific uh, abilities uh application across uh, all sorts of uh, all walks of life really 
uh, and where where is the child versus where they should be uh, at that age when we benchmark them uh, nationally within india and then also when we benchmark them internationally so that's the way we look at outcomes uh, we actually measure it uh, uh, very very frequently and that is a very important metric that everyone in the ecosystem uses and i'll also talk about how do we use or how do we take action based on that data right so we basically have two i would say two uh, big organization goals that we chase one is 70% or upwards of mastery across all subjects all skill areas every age uh, second is more than 70% of students should be above 70% mastery uh we don't believe in a bell curve in a classroom classroom should never have that all students should be succeeding uh, so those are really the two metrics and i would say that what we've managed to or what we've done successfully over the last 5 years is every year we have uh, on an average been well above 70% uh and you know uh, english language particularly is a big skill gap normally a student who comes into a lead school system has anything between 2 to 3 years of language skill gap versus where they should have been and historically we've within one academic year we've improved language skill english language mastery by at least 1.8 years and you know what that really means is that in 3 years we're able to bring uh, any child who comes into the lead system at grade level which means now success across all subjects and all skill areas becomes uh, really helpful uh, where we still have uh, i would say uh, still a lot of work needs to be done is we still haven't uh, you know achieved 70% kids above 70% it's an internal metric that we look at we close to 50% we still have a lot of kids who are coming with learning gaps and you know we we just need more time with them uh because uh, you know we are also a young organization and it requires that much time to work with uh, students uh just to add some more color to it see the way we have basically been trying to solve this problem is one through uh, changing the way learning happens from uh, you know textbook orientation to multimodal we are constantly looking at this student performance or student assessment data and we're improving our curriculum and content for our uh, teachers second is that the teachers and the school is really powered by data and metrics for them to pretty much every week know where their students are with the formative assessments that are going on and hence what remedial they need to do or what action the teacher needs to take to get her uh, students who are lagging behind move them forward and we support them a lot in making that happen not only uh, you know and i think that's where tech plays a huge role where schools which were otherwise very you know analog systems which were very opinion oriented uh now mo move, have moved to becoming very transparent data oriented uh, uh organizations where there is no debate about where the child's learning level is all the discussion is around okay so what am i going to do about it you know right. uh and i think that's that's the shift that we've been trying to make and as i said i think the the simplest way i'll say is that we should never have any sonu reaching their myth uh you know and and uh, apna for that matter because it's important that in school years children children uh, do have get a level playing field and they get the core skills to be able to grow right no i think you raise an interesting point that technology is not just about distribution but it also demonstrates whether a level playing field is there and whether issues of privilege have been uh, addressed and issues of access uh, to a quality education have also uh, been addressed but let me ask the question and let's go in reverse order this time so smita let's start with you uh what's the size of the problem that you're trying to solve for uh what have you achieved uh because we're moving into the scale part of the conversation uh what have you achieved and and therefore what's the path forward so what i would love for each one of you all to cover when you'll answer this question is almost where you are today uh where you've come from uh what's one year from now going to be and then what's your long term goal so kind of think about it in that context and view it as a continuum uh because i think that gives people the sense of the challenge as well as the sense of effectively an opportunity to solve uh and so therefore scale in that context so smita let's start with you yeah thanks sandeep so we currently serve 2000 schools and close to 800000 students uh you know who study with us as i mentioned it's ages 3 to 16 so all the way from pre k to grade 10 uh 
three years back, we were uh, serving around 30 schools. So we've grown from 30 schools to 2000 schools in the last three years. Uh, and if I look forward, uh, you know, we're like, we're in the next four to five years, we want to reach out to more than 50,000 schools in India. This is still a very small number as compared to the number of schools that we have in India, number of private schools that we have in India and the number of children. I mean, we have close to half a million private schools and almost uh, 100, 140 million kids going in these schools, right? And, and even in the next four years, uh, you know, we get to around uh, 15 million. So just just ten percent of the students. So if I if I think about it, you know, one way to see it is we've scaled rapidly in the last three years, uh, but then the sense of urgency and the impatience within the team is fairly high because uh, we still have a long way to go. And and what we feel is that every year that lead has not reached them is a year of learning lost for those children because they are otherwise victim to the traditional learning uh, methodologies in the school. Uh, so yeah, so I'm, I'm hoping Sandeep will be able to breach these numbers. But yeah, for now, <laughs> that's, that's the goal that we're going after. Yeah, Smita, if you can just spend 10 seconds, we're dealing with an international audience, you mentioned private schools. So people tend to think about something uh, in the US context, okay. for example, of what a private school is. So what's the quick context in India, if you can just in 20 seconds, mention that, and then we'll move to the other. Sure, parts. sure. Yeah, so there are one and a half million uh, schools, K-12 schools in India. Out of them, one million are government schools or what in the US you would call public schools. And there are half a million private schools. India is different from the US or, or from some of the other places, uh, you know, some of the other countries because we have a fairly large private school system. Uh, and uh, the interesting thing though is that uh, when we look at the total population of students, there are 280 million school going kids. 50% of them go to the government school, the other 50% come to private schools. And the big shift that has happened in the country over the last 10 years is a big move from government schools to private schools. So private school is where the parent pays fee and hence in return expects good learning to happen. Uh, whereas government right. schools is where free education is provided. And you know the, the, the quality there has been uh, very questionable because of which the you know any parent in India who can afford would want to pay fees and send their child to a private school and not send them yeah. to a government school, unfortunately. An affordable private school in that sense. Yeah, an okay, affordable um, so private schools, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Imbasad, let's come to you. Uh, same question on the scalability uh, and what, where have you all reached in your journey and where you all are going? Uh, if you can take a few minutes on that and put things in context from your standpoint. Sure. So we are fairly very young and like, almost seven months old. And uh, we have been fortunate enough to reach to almost uh, 200,000 students so far. Every day when, uh, when we started, uh, the first day uh, I had taken uh, seven calls, seven sessions completed from seven different students. And uh, as of right now, today I got to see the dashboard and we have completed more than 15,000 sessions as we are speaking in, in last uh, 24 hours. So that is how we have grown. The, the best thing is that uh, I could expect this kind of growth. And the reason being that we are not uh, uh, telling a student that, okay, you have to do this. We are asking them that whatever you're doing, just keep on doing it. And if you need any help, just ask below. So we, uh, I think that is the power of technology that you can get into a skin of someone and understand the problem and then create a very customized solution. So that is the, I think the core uh, value which we are following. Uh, that is the reason of our growth so far. What I'm eyeing for is that I have seen in my childhood, I've seen with my friends, with my cousins that we used to be under a lot of stress when we were hustling with a lot of situation, a lot of problems, a lot of textbooks. We even could not understand what, what, is, what has been written uh, in this particular paragraph. And then I could sense that more than millions of students across India must be hustling every day, every night. So the North Star is that no student in India should sleep with any academic anxiety or stress. No matter in which state you are, no matter in which village you are living. I personally believe in India, there is one smart guy, maybe thousand or 2000 kilometer away somewhere, or even if you have to find someone beyond the borders, that's not a problem. 
but we will get you. And just talking to that guy for a couple of minutes, you will have a sound sleep out of that. So that is our North Star we are targeting. I think the number wise, uh, Indian uh, number of students and schools, uh, Smita has already uh, discussed about. So uh, we are almost uh, looking to hit those numbers. And uh, yeah, like my teammates, they, they, are, they are very, you can say, <laughs> Uh, in terms of uh, scale, they are uh, they are just they'll just go and hit any number they they want to because they are very hungry people, and uh, uh, we hardly sleep and those things. So, but but the, the the best part is when we get comments, when we get emails, because when we started it was post COVID time. So when we used to get emails and SMS from the students, that this is this is this is great. I, I just can't imagine that 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 within seconds I can connect to someone. It, it's like magic. So, so when, when a student mentioned that you guys have created Aladdin's lamp, it's just like, just go on it and there's someone just emerges out of it. So having said that, which with the smile part, which Nirmit uh, mentioned, I could actually connect that with the, that with the emails we are getting. So here the thing is that what we are actually looking for is that create a very safe environment for students when they are studying at home after having completed their school, which I believe uh, people at LEED have, have obviously uh, evolved and they are trying to improve those things, which uh, I really agree uh, with LEED school format that uh, the, the older system really needs to be revamped and, and it, it requires a lot of innovation at that stage. What we are doing is that ultimately when students study this, they do uh, the self-study part is very important. And here we come into picture, we make them comfortable. So. Right. Then, of course, this model is something where we can go across the borders because right. ultimately a students Understood. are studying. Yeah. Understood. Uh, Nirmit, let's come to you on that question of scale. Uh, and if you could just reflect on that. Yes. Uh, so, so we are, uh, so firstly, Ambassador Loud or North Star, very, very beautiful and very, very heartwarming and touching. Thank uh, you. Just wanted to acknowledge that. Yeah, so so we are a we are a sixteen month old old company, uh, um, and we are but we are kind of done fairly well. Uh, um, we have grown like north of hundred and twenty x over the last one year itself. Uh, today we facilitate more than twenty million plus work related conversations uh, and job interviews across the every single month. Over the last one year, we have facilitated north of sixty million plus interviews, um, and that also during the hard times of COVID. Uh, we uh, we are in fourteen cities now. Uh, and as, as I said, we have touched 10 million lives so far, but I think so, uh, this is just the tip of the iceberg. If you look at India, there are 250 million people in, uh, which is part of India's rising working class. And when we look at the world, uh, the global workforce is 3 billion people out of that 2.3 billion people are in this category who have been systematically ignored, uh, by the ecosystem. So I think so a lot of things to be done and what excites us is, you know, like Every day we wake up to almost today, uh, and no exaggeration here, north of 40 to 50,000 plus thank you messages. And that's a great way to wake up uh, when, and, and, and the entire team wakes up to that. So we, we say thank you so much because uh, I got an employment so that I can go and, uh, you know, uh, go and educate my, my kid and I can, you know, pay fees for my kid's education. Uh, we have seen that folks basically come and say that thank you so much for helping us uh, uh like helping me get a job because now i can pay for my mother's surgery and when you read those conversations that is what energizes us so in terms of a lot of times as i said right this are like one way is to look at metrics one way is to look at dreams look at smiles look at blessings uh which uh, uh, uh which we have been able to garner through over the last couple of months so so i think so a lot of more work to be done uh we are just uh touching the uh, surface but but excited and, and also humbled to be, you know, uh, building this uh, to empower and celebrate the lives of this rising working class across the world. Awesome. Uh, I, I think, you know, the work all three of you are doing are, are outstanding. I'm obviously a little bit more familiar with Smitha because uh, we at Elevar Equity uh, have made an investment in that company. But even, you know, both of you are young companies uh, and the kind of scale that you're already achieving is quite, quite phenomenal. Uh, I just thought I'll share a a little bit of a personal story. Uh, so a few years ago, we did a roundtable of people who are interested uh, uh, in uh, in education, both in a developed and a developing markets context. And there were about 40, 50 people associated in that discussion. And at the end of the discussion, there was almost this eureka moment where a leading education investor who invests mostly in the developing market, developed market said, 
ah i get the difference you all are solving for affordability uh while in the us it's it's a completely different or in europe it's a completely different strategy what i think is is really the crux of when when you work in india is that, that premise of affordability and scale um uh, and you cannot really be impactful or make a difference or build a meaningful business unless you're really solving for both those dimensions and and i think to the point that you'll made on the first question uh which is the role of technology and distribution strategies that if you really have to achieve potential in many respects you have to have innovative technology solutions but also work in hybrid environments uh we have a few minutes left and then we'll wrap so i think what i would just love for a final reflection uh is is this question of if you take all of these dimensions into consideration layer on the covid challenge a little bit uh and kind of like where do you think the indian ecosystem in the context of education is going to go if you can each take maybe about a minute minute and, minute and a half and then we can wrap so uh nirmit let's start with you uh why don't you kick off uh let's keep this to a minute minute and a half so that we can everybody can get a chance and we can wrap up on time right uh, so so i i i think so in terms of education i can talk a bit about the job related skilling so i did yeah. so i i think so when i talked about the story of uh, of sonu and rahul it was all about the network gap but i think so skill gap is something which we need to solve given we work with a lot of industries uh, um, and and also with the blue and gray collar workers we see there is significant skill gap which i think so needs to be solved first as we as, as we start looking for the next generation and because if you cannot shape the career of an individual which is uh, you cannot go and shape uh, because the, the, once you go and shape the career you are going to shape the also the career of the country right i think so because this folks are going to write the story of the country so so i think so job related skilling becomes most important as we start looking at and solving for skill gap right imbasat do you want to final thoughts any yeah. covid observations so so post covid observations one thing is clear that that nothing is permanent things are about to change the good part is that people who are running technology companies who are running either it's in education or scaling or in some other way they are very close to the industry they are very they are they are evolving with time and they are observing what's happening around the globe but people the folks who are running conventional schools uh, maybe in government or maybe in in villages or in other parts of the world they are not so much updated so we have an advantage that we can in addition to the five subject or the seven subjects we can impart so much of knowledge to our students starting from class 3 4 5 in getting even up to 11 12 12 that we can add lot of skilling and upskilling thing not may not necessarily be related to a job thing but even just just to to make them explore more like like we can we can teach music we can teach so many languages uh, online we can teach coding we can teach cooking we can teach so many amazing things are there uh, even game sports things so uh like the 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 good part is that the, there are multiple layers available now which earlier they were not because of the conventional schooling method so thank you for that imbasad i i think the potential of what all we can do in india it's almost white territory you can just like consequently like do almost anything and it adds value uh smita do you want to come in with some final thoughts uh, yeah i think uh, yeah i think uh, covid uh, covid has actually in a way accelerated or rather in a, in a large way accelerated innovation in the space of education i think that's that's fantastic i mean no one wanted it this way but honestly yeah. uh, and and i would i would mention two big change that we've seen i think one is that earlier pre covid we would see inertia at school level to transform and embrace technology and that has rapidly shifted i think schools over the last one year have figured that if they do not uh embrace technology they are they're not going to survive and that in a way has been really good for students so i think that has been a good thing second is that learning because of it being online has reached inside households there have been so many instances where parents and grandparents have attended classes for our students and they've learned english and i think the the benefit of that is that a lot of debate that we used to have around the pedagogical approaches is now actually going away because parents are seeing the benefit so i think you know uh, these were the two big benefits we saw at, actually with covid and hence it was good for our students outstanding no thank you all three of you i mean imbasat nirmit and smita this was uh, for me uh, i I've, i've been obviously investing in india for a while in addition to latin america uh, but what always blows me away is is the level of innovation in the way we need to think about models 
uh, that reach you know the mass market if you will or low income communities or middle income communities and i think it's just quite outstanding to see the work that all three of you are doing um, like i mentioned on on the premises of affordability scalability and using innovative distribution strategies to achieve the outcomes that we're all aspiring for uh, i've long maintained that some of the most innovative models come out of the emerging markets like india and i think the work that the three of you all are doing is testimony to that fact so on that note thank you very much and uh, i guess we can wrap up thank you thank, thank you, you.